Despite the fact that it is 7.15 in the morning, we are super excited because once we head downstairs and finish our breakfast up, then we are going to be going on a tour of Lanha Bay and more importantly, Halong Bay. I don't know about you, but I am so excited for this. Me too, because this has been on my bucket list for a really long time, so I can't wait. Let's crack on. We got picked up from our hotel and took a bus to the port where we boarded our boat. Our first point of interest for the day was a floating fishing village. We believe there are between three and six still in existence to this day, which still house over a thousand people in total. We cruise along the emerald green water meandering through the high concentration of dark grey limestone islets that rise up out of the water. It's worth noting that in order to get to the more famous Halong Bay, you must first travel through the lesser known Lan Ha Bay. As you can see though, it is just as breathtaking. Our first stop was to go kayaking through Bright Cave, Dark Cave, and Bat Cave. This provided us with a unique perspective being so close to the water and looking up at the giant rock formations surrounding us. It made us feel insignificant in comparison to the grandeur of nature.
next stop was at one of the many small white sand beaches dotted around Halong Bay. Here we had the opportunity to swim in the relatively cool water before we hopped back on the boat for a delicious lunch. We then made our way back to Katba Island to visit a small village on the northeast coast. We cycled along a winding path flanked by more limestone mountains covered in green rainforest. halfway point we stopped for what the locals called a fish massage. Just like at Bima Sinkhole in Oman, the fish eat the dead skin and bacteria off your feet. It tickles at first, but your skin never feels smooth thereafter. We then headed back through fields with buffalo and cows before arriving to our final stop of the day where we had the opportunity to go swimming again. We were feeling quite cold, so we didn't want to get wet again, but two brave people on our tour swam to shore and fed some local monkeys who were hanging out on the abandoned buildings. We've just got back from our tour. We were out for nine hours, so it was a full day. And I think we should start by saying how amazing the tour company was. They were perfectly on time. The tour guide spoke great English. The whole staff were friendly and helpful. We felt safe on board. The lunch provided was very tasty. It was just very efficient, well-organized, and obviously fun too. <laughs> yeah, we got properly well taken care of and with the activities that we ended up doing, then obviously there can be some inherent risk, like, you know, jumping off a boat is not something that you do every day, but they really kind of made sure that it was as safe as it possibly could be. So yeah, it shook out really, really well. That's kind of the way that I conceptualized actually going around Halong Bay in the first place and just seeing it for what it was. So it was awesome. And I'm really glad that we were able to do it this way. And what I mean by that is staying in Kappa as opposed to what a lot of tourists do, which is they take a trip from Hanoi, whether it be just for a day, or they take a trip from Hanoi and stay one night in Halong Bay on a boat. Mm -hmm. That I'm sure would be great because you would beat the tourist crowds the next day mm -hmm. because you wake up there but it is more pricey. Whereas I feel like the way we've done it, it was very affordable. And because we stayed on Kappa, we were also able to beat the other tourists coming in from Hanoi. Mm. Because I don't know about you, but I didn't find it all that crowded, which Not was so. one of the pitfalls that we had been told about. Exactly. The main concern that I certainly had was when we did the kayaking, because obviously, especially when you're going through the caves, there's only a small amount of space to get through. And so I thought that, that it would just be a massive traffic jam everywhere we went. But actually, it barely happened. Like It bottlenecked a little bit when we saw the monkeys and stuff like that. But no, honestly, beyond that, it was just really relaxed. And it felt like for the most part, we kind of had the area to ourselves which was really nice absolutely and for me it just ticked all the boxes the whole time I was saying to Nick like can you believe we're in Halong Bay we're kayaking in Halong Bay mm -hmm. we're swimming in Halong Bay mm -hmm. it is just such a beautiful area we have gone on a few boat tours and seen similar landscapes mm. i'm thinking particularly in i guess like karome philippines and langkawi malaysia where you have this like emerald green water and then you have these huge limestone rock formations that have greenery all over them 
We've seen that before, but the difference to me for how long they was just the sheer volume and concentration of it all. It was breathtaking. Absolutely. It really was like those excursions, but just on roids. Like everywhere you went was a viewpoint. Like you could have just been completely lost in taking photographs. Like I think we actually had to make mm -hmm. a point of stopping ourselves and just trying to enjoy it for what it was. Because like otherwise we'd have just been absolutely locked on to trying to get footage and photos. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just really interesting because like obviously we're going through a bunch of places in the world where we've seen so many photos, so many videos from documentaries, YouTube, whatever have you. And so you get a concept of what you're going to see when you go to visit somewhere. But even with what we've seen of Halon Bay, it just, it really doesn't do it justice. It exceeded my expectations, mm -hmm. which I think it's always dangerous when you have expectations going in. Yeah especially when someone has raved about a place, mm. there's a lot of potential for disappointment. Yes. And in this case, didn't happen. No. It was phenomenal. Absolutely not a problem at all. So I think it really goes without saying that if you are going to be in Vietnam, you just have to do Ha Long Bay. I think our experience of doing it from Cat Bar did make it better, though obviously, with your itinerary, then, you know, you can probably still do it from Hanoi and still get a great experience out of it. This was just our preference. For now, I think we are going to go and grab some dinner. Mm -hmm. So, let's head out. I have ordered these fresh Vietnamese spring rolls. At other restaurants, they have been quite expensive, whereas here on Kappa Island, we have actually found them for 60 dong, which is just over $3. In the interest of full disclosure, we had them yesterday when we arrived for lunch, and they were just phenomenal. There's egg, lettuce, carrot, cucumber, and vermicelli noodles and they come with this amazing, tangy, sweet, sour, hot sauce for dipping. They are just the best thing ever. Yet another meal to cap off what has been a truly unforgettable day that will probably stay with us forever. We are going to be leaving Kappa tomorrow and so find out where we're gonna be going in our next video. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling.